This week, we're learning an amazing mentalism trick that will fool everyone you show it to. And the best part is it's so easy that anyone can do it even if you're not a magician. You guys are gonna love it. Welcome back to the channel everyone and I'm so excited because Halloween is upon us. This is the time of year where we get to do spooky, freaky kind of magic which is one of my favorite types of magic to do and the trick we're learning this week is one of my best creations for that type of thing. Now last week on my live stream I gave you guys a sneak peek of the performance and the feedback was incredible. You guys loved the trick, you were all so excited to learn it. So let's get to it right now. Let's start with the performance. Here it is. There is something amazing right there. Something you're not gonna believe. Actually, it's a story. And I'm the only one here who knows how this story ends. You guys don't read, you don't know how this story ends. You don't even know what the story is. But I already know how it ends. And I'm gonna tell you guys what the story is. It happened a couple of hundred years ago, this time of year, during the fall, in a small village in Europe where they noticed that people were going missing, mysteriously. Nobody knew what happened to them. And the villagers suspected that it was some kind of supernatural force. So they brought in an expert, uh, a, a ghost hunter or a paranormal investigator. Reed, you're gonna play the role of the paranormal investigator. That's gonna be you. You're gonna use your intuition to figure out what's going on. Now the villagers suspected that there were one of six possible uh, types of sort of supernatural things that were causing the vanishings. Some of them thought it was a mummy. Can you see that? I'll, I'll hold it here so you can see that. Yeah. Some people thought it was a mummy. Some people thought it was a werewolf. See, he's even got a hat because otherwise it would just be a wolf. <laughs> uh, some people thought it was a vampire. Uh -huh. Some people thought it was an alien, you know, alien invasion, super yeah. popular theory and people go missing. Some people thought it was a ghost. Good old classic ghost story. And some thought it was a witch type of thing they believed in back then. Now, you're the paranormal investigator, Reed, and you're going to be able to figure out who it was. So we're going to narrow it down first. Now, I want to make this very clear because I don't want you to think I'm twisting your words around. Yeah. I'm going to spread the cards and I'm going to count from my left to my right. And we're going to keep what you want. I'm not going to say like, oh, you, we're going to eliminate or anything like that. Do you want to keep the cards that fall on the even numbers or the odd numbers? Totally up to you. Let's do even. Let's you do want even. to do even, you're sure? Yeah, even. Now, I, I said what I was going to do. I can't twist your words around. I can't be like, okay, let's eliminate even. That's not what I said. I said I'm going to spread. And we're going to keep, you said, the even cards. Yeah. So the even cards are, so one, which is one that's not even. Ghost is two, that is even. Three, four, five. Six. The even cards are mummy, vampire, and ghost. Was that as fair as it gets? Yep. Okay. Now, I want you to focus as the paranormal investigator. Use your intuition. You're going to eliminate one of these. So in your mind, we have the ghost, the vampire, and the mummy. I want you to think of one that you don't think is guilty. Just think of one in your mind. You have one? You don't think is guilty? That you don't think is guilty. Okay. You have one? Yes. Yeah. Reed, are you thinking of, focus, are you thinking of the mummy? Yeah, I am. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Two left. Now, there's no way I could have known you were thinking of the mummy. That was totally random. Uh -huh. Two left. Ghost and vampire. This time, I want you to just do this intuitively, really quick. Don't even think about it. I'm going to say one, two, three, go. I'm going to snap my fingers. Name one that you're eliminating, that you don't think is guilty. Ready? Yeah. As ghost or vampire, just blurt it out. One, two, three, name one. Ghost. Sorry, what? Ghost. Ghost. Ghost is, we're getting rid of it. Yeah. That's very clear. It's not, it's not a play on words. You don't want the ghost. You think the vampire is the guilty one, correct? Yeah, must be. Now, I told you I know how this story ends, but we were testing your intuition as a paranormal investigator. Mm -hmm. And I told you something amazing was going to happen here. And I think it did. Because, Reed, you narrowed it down to the vampire. You think a vampire caused all this. Well, the ghost was innocent. The mummy was innocent. The werewolf was innocent. It wasn't aliens. The witch, believe it or not, was innocent. But the vampire, well, he was guilty. 
<laughs> no man. What? <laughs> <laughs> There it was, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now as you could see, this is a really direct and powerful mentalism trick where you impossibly predict the choice that they're gonna make with a really cool Halloween story. But you don't have to do the Halloween story. You could do any presentation you want and it could be any six items. You don't even have to draw them, you could just write them down and you could do this with little pieces of paper. I really like to use those blank cards because I think it looks really professional. And if you wanna do the same, I'll leave a link in the description where you could get those blank cards for a really great price delivered right to your door. Now let's jump right into the explanation, but before we do, do me a huge favor, take one second, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more awesome magic, mentalism, and hypnosis. So here's what you need to do the trick. You need a rubber band to hold the cards together, you need an envelope or a box that the cards are gonna go into, and then you're gonna need the six cards or pieces of paper with the six items that they can choose, which is totally up to you, but these are the ones I use for the Halloween trick. Now, if you do wanna do the same thing as me and draw these, just take a screenshot right now, and then you can go draw these on your cards. But these are the six options. Now, the order kind of matters, but it could sort of be random. Here's what I mean. What's important is that the second, fourth, and sixth, so the even numbers, are ghost, vampire, and mummy. The order of those doesn't matter. Like, it could be like this, doesn't matter. And one, three, and five, also the order doesn't matter. It could be, you know, whatever, like this. It doesn't make a difference, but in the second, fourth, and sixth position, you have to have mummy, vampire, and ghost in any order. Then you pick it up like this, that's at the bottom then the mummy, then the werewolf, then for example, the vampire, the alien, and the ghost. Now, on the back of the vampire, as you saw in the performance, it says guilty. The other ones are completely blank. To start the trick, you tell them the story of the village and the paranormal investigator, and you show the six options. Ghost is one, alien is two, three is vampire, four is werewolf, five is mummy, and six is witch. Now we have to get them to narrow down those six to three, and those three have to be the ghost, the vampire, and the mummy. Now normally, in most magic tricks, the way this is done is you just say, uh, what do you want, even or odd? And if they say even, you go, great, we'll use the even. One, two, three, four, five, six, those are the even ones. And if they say odd, you go, great, we'll eliminate the odd, and you get rid of the odd ones, and you keep the even ones. But I don't like that, I don't like to eliminate what they named. I wanted it to be a lot more fair, so I came up with this really great principle, or at least I think so, and here's what it is. I realized that non-magicians, and even most magicians, don't realize that the orientation in which you spread a deck completely changes the order of the cards. We don't think about that because we think about top and bottom don't get affected, so it doesn't dawn on us, but check this out. I tell my audience, I'm gonna do this very fair. I'm gonna spread the cards and I'm gonna count from my left to my right. What do you want to keep, even or odd? Guys, honestly, I don't know how much mentalism you know, but that's a really fair question. But here's what happens. If they say even, I spread. And I go, great, even. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the even ones. If they say odd, all I have to do is spread the other way from right to left. I never said which way I was gonna spread. Also, initially when I showed the cards, I said, this is one, this is two, this is three, and this stays consistent with that. But now, the order is different. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now the three that I need, the ghost, the vampire, and the mummy, have fallen on the odd cards. So either way, these are the ones they chose, and it's really, really fair. You put those aside. Now I'm gonna ask them in their minds to think of one of these three that they don't think is guilty. And we're gonna have another great mentalism moment where I'm gonna just read their mind and tell them which one they're thinking of. And here's how that works. I say, in your mind, think of one of these three that you don't think is guilty. Don't say it out loud, just think. Got it? Great. Was it the mummy? Now here's the secret. That's just a guess. One out of three times, they're gonna go yes, and you're gonna take credit and go, but you didn't tell me that, right? I just guessed it, and that's a great moment. 
But if they say no, you pretend like it wasn't even a trick. You were just asking, is it the mummy? Because you need to know. So let's say they say no, you go, is it the mummy? No. Uh, was it the vampire? No, so it was the ghost. Okay, we'll get rid of that. So it just looks like you're asking a question. So one out of three times, it's a miracle. Two out of three times, you just go on with the trick. Get rid of the ghost. Now we're down to two more. At this point, you say, uh, think of another one that you don't think is guilty, that you want to get rid of. And I'm going to say one, two, three, just name one. So you could present this however you want, but one, two, three, let's say they say mummy and you get rid of that one like this. You're left with the vampire. So now you say, um, I said that I know the end of the story, but you don't, but I promised you something amazing. The mummy was innocent. The ghost was innocent. The alien was innocent. It wasn't the werewolf and the witch was innocent as well, but the vampire, was guilty. And you show, obviously pointing it to them, the fact that it says guilty on the back of the vampire. But what if they eliminated the vampire and chose the mummy or the ghost? Well, let's say they eliminate the ghost and then the vampire and they think it's the mummy. Remember, they don't know that there's anything written on the back of the vampire. You can even pick these up and casually spread a few as you go to put them away. But here's what happens inside the envelope. Remember at the beginning of the trick I said, there's something amazing here? There is something amazing right there. Well, I go back to that. I say, remember before we start, I said, there's something amazing here. Well, I want you to see that inside that envelope, there's only one prediction and you could show them that there's nothing else inside there. And in that prediction, it says it was the mummy. And remember guys, this is a huge moment for them because they have no idea that had they said vampire, it was going to be something else. So to them, that's a wonderfully direct prediction. Now, what if they say ghost? Because that's the third option, right? We're here and they eliminate the vampire, they eliminate the mummy and they come down to ghost. Well, here's what you do. You grab these all upside down, put them back inside the envelope and you say, Remember how I told you, cause now you're left with just this. Remember how I told you there was something amazing right there? Well, I wrote something on the back of this envelope or box or whatever you're using. And there's no way I could have known you were going to choose the ghost, but I predicted it was a ghost. So that's your third out. And now you can even reach in and grab these out. There's nothing extra there. No one's going to count these to see how many there are. And your prediction has just kind of blended in with these. So in every case, you have a really clean and direct out and they have no idea what you would have done had they said anything else. So it seems completely impossible. There it was. I hope you guys enjoyed this awesome trick and that you're going to use it to get some insane reactions this Halloween. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. And also let me know how are you going to do it? Are you going to do it with the Halloween story or do you have another presentation in mind? Are you going to do it with the blank cards so where it's like this great performance piece? Or are you going to do it more as an impromptu thing with pieces of paper? I really want to know how you see yourself using this in the comments. Let me know and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.